my friends, welcome back to Red Eyes Radio. I hope you're doing well and that you are comfortable wherever you are. As you know, if you are a regular listener, we are coming to you from Gothenburg in Sweden. But you can, of course, find us around the globe wherever you can get internet access. Our website is redeyescreations.com. This is the place to go if you want to uh, read interesting, important news from around this world and uh, sometimes beyond. You can listen to uh, groundbreaking radio interviews on a myriad of topics. We add new programs twice a week and uh, wherever we're not out on the road filming or attending conferences. And uh, you can of course tune in whenever you want to through our archives. We have a free archive with over a year of good stuff for you. And we also have a members area where you can get full access to our archives going back to 2006. We have video interviews, webcast films and uh, much more of that is in the pipeline as well. All the details again on how you can sign up and join us can be found on our website, redeyescreations.com. Uh, also, while you're there reading, listening or watching some of our content, uh, don't forget to check out our YouTube channels, uh, one for radio and another one for video. We also have a Twitter feed now, so you can follow us from uh, your cell phone or a mobile. All right, let's move on and focus uh, on our program here. Our guest today is Lennon Honor. He is a researcher and filmmaker who primarily focus on subliminal programming and manipulation within the media. He has been focusing uh, a lot on the music industry as well as uh, television programming and uh, shall we call it Disney mind control. Uh, I recently linked up on uh, Red Eyes a couple of videos, uh, trailers rather, that is on uh, Lennon's upcoming project called The Borg Agenda and the Sexualization of Technology. And uh, this obviously ties in the whole technological aspect into the mind control agenda as well. And uh, this is what we primarily are going to focus on today. Uh, the website that you can take a look at right away here is LennonHonorFilms.com. That will give you much more information about his projects and research. We will have this uh, linked up on our end as well. Of course, you can click through easily and uh, get to Lennon's website from, from ours. Uh, so with that, welcome to Red Ice Radio, Lennon. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Yeah, it's absolutely my pleasure, Henrik, and I'm honored to be here with you today. Excellent. Thank you very much, Lennon. It's uh, great of you to spend some of your uh, time with us here today, and I'm really looking forward to diving into uh, some of these uh, areas with you. I've been uh, looking at a few of your uh, projects, a few of your v videos and, and, and films, and uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about yourself before we kind of dive into the main uh, topic here today. Uh, I know that you're a pretty good flute player, actually, and we might touch upon that a little bit <laughs> later in the program. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and uh, but. You are, but uh, definitely tell us how you kind of get involved in, uh, in how and when rather, when you get involved in this kind of uh, research that you're doing currently, Lennon. Yeah, um, I've been doing um, research into certain, you know topics I think that people would probably consider to be, um, I guess, I don't know if, if abnormal is the right word to use, but it's just a little bit outside of the box. I've been probably doing that uh, maybe for about six years, but it's always been an ongoing process from birth. Um, but it wasn't until like maybe over the last, a uh, year and a half, I really started to look at um, subliminal uh, messages and how they manipulate human consciousness. And in terms of doing film, I've been doing it almost for about a year now. And um, how I got into it uh, was real interesting because it, it wasn't like I had a you know the intent of actually producing films. What you know, my my wife and I, we have four children, and we um we don't allow our children to watch broadcast television because we try to limit the, the you know the amount of of conscious um. Uh, manipulation uh, that takes place, especially the subliminal manipulation that takes place through media. So we, we try to shield them from as much of it as possible. We can't shield them from all of it, but we can sure do our best as parents and as responsible parents um, to shield their consciousness uh, so they can kind of grow into the being that they so chose as opposed to being manipulated into being something that um, you know, manipulators want them to be. And yeah, um, that's what right. yeah, yeah. So what happened was we um we go to the library and we'll pick out a, a movie or we'll we'll, we'll uh, you know get out uh, check out a couple of movies and then we will bring them home. And my wife and I we always screen the movies prior to allowing our children to watch them. And many parents they don't do that. They'll just allow their children um, to watch things without screening them. And what we found in our screening process was most of the films that we brought home that were supposed to be for children were really inappropriate for children. And a lot of it has to have to do with um. 
uh, the sexualization of carts within cartoons, subliminals, uh, sexual references within cartoons, a lot of pedophilic content within cartoons. And um, my wife and I, most of the movies we bring home, we don't allow our children to watch just be, just because of that that uh, fact alone. And one, there was one movie in particular, I remember it, um, that we picked up and it was called Angels in the Outfield. It was it's a Disney film. And we thought, OK, it's Angels in the Outfield and my son likes baseball. One of my sons, he likes baseball. So we figured, OK, this would be an excellent one for him because it's, you know, it's it sounds really, really nice. And mm -hmm. we put the film in and we were screening it. And within 10 minutes, we, we turned it off. And we because my wife and I we were like, there is absolutely no way that we're going to subject our children to this level of mind manipulation. And it was a Disney film. Mm -hmm. And after after that, <laughs> I, uh, I talked to my wife and I said, you know, one day I, I really I really would like to do um, analysis of film and music videos and music lyrics and actually, you know, produce films in that regard. And she was like, you know, you should do it. So um, what ended up happening was after that uh, experience, I really got into really um, just in terms of, uh, of analysis. I started to analyze different movies and videos. And after a while, I figured, OK, why don't I put this in video form? And I did that as well. And since that time, it's been maybe about a year, almost a year now. And it's mm -hmm. been a remarkable journey ever since. Wonderful. And, and uh, you know, there's so much I want to talk about that in regards to uh, Disney and, and the general idea that you're trying to take that responsibility that you're talking about to kind of shield your uh, your kids from uh, from this uh, subliminal programming. But uh, um, what I want to ask you about here right away is is um, uh, you know what do you, what do you feel that uh, is is the worst in in some of these uh, films that you're screening? If we talk about Disney, for instance, is it uh, uh, is it something that you easily can can see? I mean, how, there must be something in regards to how you become become aware of this yourself. Maybe you've been uh, uh, reading a lot about the subject, or or is it more kind of an intuitive feeling that you get when you watch it? That shit, I don't like this. What is going on? And then you sit down and analyze it, or how do you go about about that, Lenon? Yeah, there's yeah, there's it's a, a many factors. One is um, just I, I work with this concept called reclaiming our sight, and. It's it's what it really deals with is some people call it the third eye. I just don't use it that reference. But the third eye concept is to be able to perceive things for what they really are, as opposed to per perceiving things just at face value. Because as human beings, you know, in terms of, of our manifesting here, there's a lot more going on than what we've been told in terms of our experience. And there's a lot there's a lot more that's um, what I call in plain sight that many people just cannot see. And um, so part of what my films do is it really does is it really puts people through a, a process as I go through the process because it's all a process of um, reclaiming our sight so that we can see things that before we, we didn't even recognize as being present. And um, that's one level. It's just it's an everyday process of being diligent and just, just asking critical questions and really thinking critically about what we see, what we hear, what people say to us, the images that we see, the symbolism that we see, the, the uh, underlying storylines within films. Just really um, taking a critical look and using our critical thinking skills as human beings to analyze the, you know things that are around us. So that's one level. But, but in terms of reading, I don't do much reading at all, and I, I, I um, most of the information that I speak about in my films, I, I, it's it's internal, meaning that um, you know I'm aware that in terms of acquiring information information is infinite so therefore the methods and means of acquiring information is is also infinite and that's relevant because once we understand the infinity in terms of how we can acquire information we realize that we don't really have to go to, to any external force for information it's all ready inside of us and there's a lot of yeah. other uh, concepts when we talk about dna and so forth that, that really plays a part in that so for me um the only book that i read that really kind of put things in perspective for me in terms of subliminal manipulation um was a book by dr uh, wilson brian keys and I would highly recommend that to anyone. And I don't I never recommend books to people. But if I could recommend one book, that would be the one. And mm -hmm. it's titled um, The Age of Manipulation. Uh, and, and within the age of manipulation, he just breaks down a lot of the different levels of subliminal manipulation that's taking place on the planet, and especially within media. And from viewing that or from reading that book, um, I really started to think more critically about the symbolism around. So there's many different things that have kind of um, infused into my consciousness that has allowed me to see things. But ultimately, it's a matter of sight. And every individual yeah. is, you know, it's in, it's, in, it's in their best interest. And in particular, it's in their children's best interest to reclaim their sight to such a degree so that they can shield themselves and shield their, their children and, and future generations as well from the different levels of subliminal manipulation. Absolutely. And uh, what, what do you feel is uh, one good technique of doing it? Uh, do you think that 